Thank you. Woo! Thanks everyone, it's so great to be back to NixCon. Um, it's been a while. So, all right. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about a bit what we've, we've been working on at Cashix for the last kind of year. Um, and I'll, I'll start with a slide that I think I had for the next, last, last few NixCons, which is the two kind of areas of focus. Um, what's the feedback loop, okay. Um, so it's documentation and infrastructure. Um, is it? Is, am I talking too loud or what? Oh, it's not me, okay, good to know. Um, yeah, all right. So in the last um, yeah, few years, um, I started Nix.dev, which I think Valentin will talk more about um, where it's going. Um, but the original idea was to kind of go away from what the community is doing and try to write actual documentation and, and see, you know, how to get there and then slowly start to, to drive this project back into the community. And th this is kind of like what's happening right now. And on the infrastructure side, probably um, most of you are have heard of or are using Cashix for binary caches and now we have already um, caching deploy, which is in, in kind of beta phase. Um, oh, by the way, I totally forgot. Um, who is doing Nix? Kind of who is writing Nix uh, as part of their full-time job? Can you raise your hands, please, just, just to see? Nice. Woo! So, so just for reference, like I think last Nix gone, it was just a handful of hands. So you know, there's. Definitely progress. Um, yeah, so this is kind of like the, the areas of focus right now. So, so why did we build another deployment tool? Obviously, because there's not enough. Um, there's probably more than just these, but there's a lot of projects um, out there that are trying to, and even, you know, NixOS itself comes with kind of like a deployment tool, NixOS Rebuild. Um, so, so I, I would, so, like, these tools and you know what what kind of service purpose uh, they serve. Um, so, so the main focus was to to make to to kind of think about what would be the minimal tool that is the easiest to use, the simplest to use, um, and and kind of fits a lot of the use cases out there. Um, so. Talking about developer experience, in, in my mind, this is an uh, intuitive interface, kind of supporting known workflows and, and, and really good documentation. Actually, one of the reasons why uh, I started this project is because you know I wanted to have a reason to write documentation how to deploy Nix. And the best way is, is, to, write, uh, is to write a tool. Um, and, and so here we are. And the last one is the simple setup, um, which is, I don't know, how many of you are deploying NixOS, but like if you, let's say deploy to Hetzner nowadays, everybody has their own scripts and their own ways, and it's kind of like, you know, people are copying from each other and so on, but there's no, at least I don't know any really good tutorials, for example, how to deploy NixOS to Hetzner, and I'm talking metal because that's the, a bit harder uh, part. Um, so if, if, and the, the other reason is that I've always, manage my laptop like this um, by editing uh, configuration.nix and, and switching as a root and then you want to have that in a git repo so you have git repo in root um, and I always forget to push and commit because you know it doesn't matter I don't know if you're familiar with this problem but this is something that I've, I've been always kind of um, unhappy about and kind of like my dream workflow would be that you know you edit like any other software project nowadays does do the job. Um, and I think that's a more, um, that's a better workflow in my, in my, in my opinion for, for this kind of stuff. Um, so to go through some of the design decisions uh, behind it, um, and I'll, then I'll, we'll, I'll show you a bit more about how it works. Um, 
a lot of the deployment tools out there are using kind of like the push architecture that you push things to the servers. Um, Cashix deploy uses pulling architecture. There are a couple of reasons for that. Um, I think Nix is, is closer to the pull architecture than to, to push, mainly because if you pull things you know, from binary cache and everything is already there, um, then it's, it's much easier to scale. Let's say you la launch a thousand of machines and so on. Um, and it's a bit, um, um, it, I'll talk a bit more about like um, other, other bits, but um, the binary deployments are just because I think that there's no reason to, to evaluate, to build or anything on the target machine. Um, this could be just because, okay, you might have an IoT That easy. Um, and we have, you know, CIs and so on that kind of take care of this part. Um, so they, they should be, I think, responsible for the building and evaluation. Um, so so on, the, on the target's machine or, you know, server, whatever you want to call it, um, it's just downloading binaries. Um, so it's just streaming data to disk and then activating whatever Nix wants to do. Um, and it's kind of like tailored towards CI CD workflow, as I said, which, um, so who, who is using continuous delivery in their projects, as in that, you know, continuous, can you raise your hand? All right, there's, there's quite a few people. Um, yeah, so the idea is that anything you build goes directly to, to, to the servers, you know, that could be staging or production, uh, depending on the workflow. Um, but there's absolutely zero effort for that to happen. Um, and one of the design decisions is that it's cloud scale. So if somebody wants to launch, let's say, a thousand or you know, ten thousand uh, servers with Nix, uh, that should just work out of the box, and there shouldn't be any problem. Next. Uh, again, choose it for my laptop. And you know, when you travel around, you if you if something pushes to your laptop, yeah, that you have a problem there. Um, there's other tools like Telescale and so on nowadays to solve this problem, um, but this design decision make, makes it that you don't have to use any of these tools. Um, and slow, intermittent, connection friendly. So, like when I edit my um, like laptop, for example, I and I'm traveling, which I often do. I don't need to like download a lot of things and you know push them back to binary cache while I'm you know somewhere on a slow connection. Um, so. Not always you will encounter this kind of thing, but it's kind of nice that CI can handle that and, and do it in the, the fastest way. Um, and another thing that's, that is, deserves its own slide, I think, is provisioning. So for example, mix-ups that we use today uh, kind of handles provisioning, and there are different tools to provision um, you know, servers or infrastructure. Um, but, but, but in my opinion, like. Terraform is is really good tool that is maintained by a lot of people um, at at HashiCorp, and at the moment I don't think that you know we have the capacity to to kind of be better. We can I think, but right now we are not. So a lot of people will use Terraform, and so Cashix deploy does not solve provisioning. That is kind of like just um, so, continuous delivery. Are you ready for complexity of this? Um, so the idea is, the CI builds the next derivations, pushes the binary cache, and then all the agents kind of just pull things from the binary cache and, and activate. Um, so, very simple. Um, so, all right, to show you how it works, um, cache deploy agent, and then you specify the name of the agent, and uh, optionally the Nix profile name. So this could be, um, system in case of NixOS or something else. Um, by default, the agent will kind of try to determine the profile by, um, on its own. So if you're uh, running the agent on a NixOS machine, it will figure out that you're deploying to NixOS machine. If you're deploying to, let's say, a macOS, it will assume you're using Nix Darwin, um, and it will just auto-install Nix Darwin on the first deploy. Um, so essentially, you, you don't need to do anything to, let's say, bootstrap a machine. Um, and now I'll, I'll talk about um, how the deployments come to the agent. So the agent will then just uh, connect to the service and await deployments uh, to come in. And in the, in the next release of Cashix, 
there's going to be also a bootstrap flag, which will, which is uh, kind of useful. And I'll talk about this a bit later when you want to like just um, start an agent to perform the first deployment, and then that agent kind of just stops, and the deployed uh, agent takes care of of uh, takes over. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to to let's say um, start a, a Nick, manage a Nix Darwin um, profile, you would you would use this to to do the first one, and then Nix Darwin would start by the configuration uh, with their support for Kashyx um, deploy um, and its own agent, and this one would exit, and that one would take over. Um, so essentially, with this, you can just um, very easily start and 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 managing your Nix OS, Nix Darwin, whatever Nix profile. Um, in, in with one, one command. I'm leaving out the tokens here. You need to specify token, but um, that's boring stuff. And yeah, Nix, Nix Darwin derivation just works. Um, so this, this was the agent part. So what the agent does, as I said, it connects to the service and it's kind of uh, awaiting what to deploy. Um, so on the other side, um, Nix Kashyx um, deploy activate, and then you give it a, a path to a JSON file, will we'll actually activate a deployment, and you can specify, as you can see there, agents. So deployments are essentially mapping between agents and store paths, um, and then the agent kind of determines what's in that store path as it downloads it. Um, and there's, there's also support that if, if something goes wrong and the agent does not connect back, it will automatically roll back that, um, that deployment. Um, so it's kind of like a sanity check. But you can specify your all rollback scripts. And if this script exits with non-zero, then it will roll back whatever is, is deployed. Um, so you can kind of like do sanity checks and things like that. Um, so this part kind of is declarative interface to, to deploying and is usually um, should be done, I think, from the CI. And uh, I'll, I'll show you a, a bit later. Um, Okay, all right, I have 12 minutes more. So, right, documentation. Um, there's documentation how to, how to deploy just a normal Nix profile, Nixus, and Darwin. Um, I would like to add home manager support uh, as well. Um, and just after NixCon, I will release the, the tutorial for Amazon AWS, where kind of like we pre generate the AMIs that already have Kashyx agent there and everything. So we just apply the token and the name, and then it will just connect. And then from, from, from your GitHub repo, you can just start pushing uh, um, your, your new derivations to the agent. Um, so there is no need to, to generate an AMI and anything. And these deployments are really fast. When the agent gets uh, a command to, to, to start a deployment, it will download all the binaries and activate, which is extremely fast on, on most machines, especially on Amazon, and it usually takes a couple of seconds, depending on how much you need to, how much you need to download. Um, and uh, the, the next release is going to also optimize that to be even faster, so it, it's really quick. Um, and then there's going to be a tutorial, which is also in the works and almost finished. Sender is working on this that is going to um, create a Terraform module that you can just point to any server uh, that is running uh, Nix that has Nix installed, and it will just like start and bootstrap the agent, um, usually Nix OS or, or, or Nix Darwin, and so on. Um, and as I said, there's, there's most of the focus in the next weeks is going to go into tutorials. So if you have specific targets where you would like to deploy this, uh, please let me know, and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to, to, to cover that. Um, all right. So so one of the next things that is coming up. Um, We've kind of partnered with uh, with Sirocco guys, and they're gonna help with. Um, I don't know if you know about Nixdiff. Um, Gabriela Gonzalez wrote this really nice tool that you give it two derivations, and it will kind of show you the difference between them. Um, so what I would like for to what Sirocco guys are gonna be doing is um, this tool right now just outputs stuff to the terminal. But uh, it would be really nice to have a JSON or some structure that then can be machine read and displayed. Um, so they're going to, to work on that. And in general, just rethink how do we see the difference between two deployed uh, Nix derivations and try to display that um, so that you know you, 
there's been previously talks about you know how to inspect the closure size and all of this, and I think it would be really nice to have good interfaces to this so that you know um, in a couple of clicks or in, in a couple of um, uh, let's say minutes, uh, it's clear you know what's going on. Why did the closure size increase or even further I'm planning to explore. Um, all right, and the last bit is, as you know, we are, as, as we mentioned before, we are organizing a, a sprint, which is kind of like a hackathon where around 20 people are come to where I live and where Nate lives on Lanzarote. Um, and we have, we already did uh, two iterations so far. Um, so we have the third one coming in November. Um, I think that the spots are mostly filled, but if, if you really want to hack on something to improve Nix, then let us know and we'll try to make um, some space. I think this is a great way to, to get things done that are usually not able to get done and you know just take one week. Um, it's kind of pretty from Monday and Rote, which has about 25 degrees every day. Um, and we have um, catering organized so that you know you don't have to focus on getting the food and you can just uh, work together and hear some pictures from previous events so I would like to invite you if you want uh, to, to join and you have some ideas to join us and most importantly we are still looking for sponsors to cover the events um, I hope that the Nix West Foundation will will cover this kind of events and more people will organize them in the future um, but for now we need more sponsors so again, if you're hiring, uh, let us know. And we have we don't have a gold sponsor yet. Um, but even if you if you there's a sponsors plans on oceansprint.org. Um, but if you cover as a silver sponsor, that really helps as well. And and the um, all right. So. Um, that's more or less it. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, Cashix client itself is, of course, open source, and most of the stuff is going on there. Um, there's going to be more development in the future, um, and the server side is, is closed source, and the first 10 engines, agents that you run are for free, um, and uh, currently it's in beta mode, so if you want to, to, to help out, that would be great, and I hope that within a month we will release the general availability. Cash user point. And that's it. I hope you have um, some questions and thank you. I didn't even get the chance to ask and already saw hands. So. so I normally deploy with uh, Nixos uh, rebuild. And I, I like the synchronous nature that I, I see immediately if I have like a syntax error or something, uh, some silly thing that prevents it from building. And also then immediately after it deploys, I can also give it like a little poke to see if it kind of seems to be doing the right thing. So how does that work in the Cashix deploy model where it kind of happens asynchronously? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, so uh, just to go back. So, so right now, so there's two parts to this. So right now, if you run this command, it will just give you a link to, to the web interface where you can see the logs. But um, in the next release, you will just see the output of each age and what, it, what it's doing. Um, so usually, if you would run this on a CI, you would get an email that the build failed. Um, so this command currently does not exit with non-zero, but in the future, it will. And you will, you will see that something failed. Um, and then from then on, you could if it's something simple, you, you could, um, of course, you can evaluate and build locally while you're doing this. Um, and if you know, but and run this command from, from your local machine if you need to kind of um, go into the interactive mode. Um, my experience is, at least with NixOS, that most of the time, like, like evaluation fails and there are the build fails and then the, the activation kind of mostly works right. Um, so yeah, that, those are the feedback loops that you have available. 
There are more questions? Yes. On my way. Um, this spec.json file, is this manually written or generated? I see a store, store paths there. Yeah, so, so there, is a, there is actually a flake in the documentation that kind of provides functions to generate this JSON. So there is like a flake.spec, which will generate the top level thing. And then there is like a flake.nixos, which will, you know, kind of in, in, initiate a nixos machine or flake.darwin, which will create a Darwin machine. So there is like a much higher nix interface um, that is exported there. We do have time for one more. You kind of wrote them at the same time, so I'm going to go shortest for it. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just wondering how much overlap there is between the stats that Hydra is already tracking and the stats that you would want to maybe compare diff between generations of deployments here. So you mean like the diffing between two deployments? Yeah, or? yeah like I, my understanding is Hydra already does some tracking of like closure sizes. And I was just curious if you could reuse that information or, or you know, levy the infrastructure that Hydra has for generating and tracking that information here as well. Right. So, um, yeah, Hydra tracks, I think, closure size and build times, right, um, as far as I know. Um, yeah, we, we want to go much deeper into that. We, we want to show kind of like that there is, what is the difference between two deployments? Like you can kind of like di dive into it. Um, that's one bit. Um, the other one is Hydra. I don't consider it as a deployment tool, although of course you can go, let's say, build a top level Nix closure and then you can look at that. Um, but you, you kind of, I guess the interface will be will be different. Um, that's my best take. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Norman.